I think a lot of people thought, you know, the Biden administration would be a moderate administration, but it's not. And and obviously, the, the, we're just going to see a, 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 um, an even further left uh, administration with with Kamala. That's that's my honest opinion. I mean, that's it to me in a nutshell. Voters in swing states that went for Trump in 2016 that switched to Biden-Harris or went for Biden-Harris thought they were getting that old Democrat party. That Joe Biden, someone who had brand name recognition, whom they thought was going to represent moderate values, Scranton and Joe, put America first. It was almost as if people thought that he and Harris would give you an economy, the national security, world stability that Trump did without... Some of those mean tweets, it almost seems like that if those voters were going to give Democrats one last shot to get back on track, a track they had clearly fallen off of, that's why Trump, an outsider, got put into office in 2016 in the first place. But that wasn't the case. We had our very own Rob Schmidt on American Agenda yesterday, who also is thinking the exact same thing. I think in places that are very blue, Detroit, another example, Atlanta, Fulton County, another example, places that are solid blue in those places, California, New York as well, she's going to probably generate this spike, which is sure. showing her numbers. But are, are people in Pennsylvania, you know, are, are, they, are they at all allured by this at all in these states that matter? Pennsylvania matters. We, you know, yeah. Michigan matters. And, you know, outside of Detroit matters and places like that. I, I don't think the appeal is going to be there. But instead, you got record inflation under this administration. And now our unemployment rate is back to 2021 levels. Another big issue, you got the Biden-Harris border, which Harris was put in charge of. The Democrats' only defense after they dismantled what Trump put in place was the failed Senate border bill. They blamed Trump for not passing it. How about this, though? The vote was 43-50, falling short of the 60 needed to proceed. Lisa Murkowski of Alaska was the only GOP senator to vote to advance the bill. While six Democrats voted with remaining, public, remaining Republican senators to block it. So you had every Republican except one, and six Democrats voted against it. I bet based on the mainstream media reporting, you didn't know that there were actually some Democrats, six of them, that didn't like it. Clearly, there was something wrong. And I could go on. But if those swing state voters are looking for moderate, the most left ticket of all time has just been assembled with Harris Walls. This is clearly her only shot to be president. She would never win a primary. She ran to be president for 2020 and finished in last place. She didn't even get a single vote then either. She didn't get any now. In fact, here's what NBC had to say about her run back then. By the time she quit, Harris lacked money, a message, and a cohesive campaign operation, all ingredients of a successful candidacy. And if voters in key swing states again are looking for moderate, this is what CNN wrote about Kamala Harris back in 2020. In 2019, GovTrack, a nonpartisan organization that tracks bills in Congress, ranked Harris the most liberal compared to all senators. And the reason I'm talking about moderate is because Harris is trying to rebrand herself as one now only because she needs the voters who are moderate. She said for years she wanted to defund the police, ban fracking, Decriminalized, crossing the border illegally, moved to a government-run health care system as left as you can get. It's all on record. So I'll use Tim Walls' own words when it comes to just that. Look, I coach football for enough years. When somebody draws up a playbook, they plan on using it. And when they do, they'll restrict our freedoms. So based on what he's saying, they will implement everything Harris has talked about for years. If you're looking for Harris to give you what that old moderate ways are, the old Democrat Party, the facts point to it being the quite opposite, not being there anymore. And big media, they can pump up her numbers, the energy around her campaign. That's all fine. But this race is coming down to just a few states. That's the reality of the situation. And I've been thinking this is all kind of shaping up as things did in 2016. I'm seeing a lot of similarities. And you know what? Right on cue. That's exactly what one of our guests said yesterday. And a lot of these dynamics in 2024 are shaping up to be 2016 all over again. You have the liberal mainstream media who has their chosen candidate in Kamala Harris. And of course, a lot of those polls, I think you're going to see a lot of those. So those pollsters should have been out of business after how they predicted 2016. I think you're going to see the exact same, team, same thing in 2024.